Hi guys, today we're going to be doing another installment video in my Fall Traveler's Notebook Setup Series. This is the Traveler's Notebook that I'm currently working in. It's from Foxy Fix. It's a number two wide pocket in the color Rowena. I absolutely adore it. I've been in it for the whole month of September. Now, as you can see, it's very bare and stripped down. I don't have any decorative items on the outside of it. No bookmarks, no paper clips, no anything. I did that purposely because I'm going to be working in it and I don't want to ruin any of my items. If you want to see how this notebook looks set up on the outside just check out my last video in this series and you will see that and I will link that below for you. I'm going to open it up and we're going to do a quick flip through so you guys can remember where we left off. The inside is exactly the same. This dashboard is from Etsy. I'll link it below. I have a Coletto pen. I have one list insert. I have my weekly insert and I also have my new inserts for October that I just added in. I will show you this in another video. I have my brain dump and my back pockets are pretty much the same. Now this Foxy Fix dashboard right here is what we worked on in one of my other series videos. And you will recognize this, the acorn dashboard that I created that says fall days are fun days. Today we are gonna be working on this side of the dashboard. I absolutely love these dashboards from Foxy Fix. You can do so much with them. So I have an idea of what I'd like to do for this side, so let's get started. I purchased some supplies from Lawn Fawn. The first thing we're gonna be using today is the six by six petite paper pack from Lawn Fawn. I absolutely adore it. It's called Perfectly Plaid Fall. The colors are going to tie back very nicely to my traveler's notebook. I thought everything really works well together, so we're going to stick with this pattern paper pack. I have the uh, Tree Borders stitched dies from Lawn Fawn as well. These are really super cute. Can't wait to use these. And now I have two focal point stamps. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet. Um, I'll kind of decide as I go along. This one here I really love. It's called uh, Jump for Joy. I really like this pile of leaves. It's kind of where I'm leaning towards. And here's the matching die set. And if not, we're going to be doing this scarecrow here because that's adorable as well. And this is just the matching die set. Now, I also pulled out this one that says thanks. I might use this as well, so I just pulled it out in case. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I want to do is I want to pull out some matching papers. I want it to match to the insert that you see there on the right that says weekly. This dashboard is going to sit to the left of it, so I really want the papers to match. And I end up with this really pretty plaid design and the brown plaid. I like how both of those work together. I'm going to take my Big Kick cutting machine out. This is a die cutting machine. It's quite old. I've had it for a while. But I'm going to use the Lawn Fawn Stitched Tree Border die, and I'm going to lay it up a little higher on the piece of paper. I want to decorate the bottom portion so I want to make sure I leave myself some space. Now I'm going to use some low tack frog tape to hold the die in place. This way it doesn't shift when I run it through the die cutting machine. And what I did is I separated all the dies ahead of time so it would take less time to film this. And I'm just going to make sure when I peel this up that I go really slow with that low tack paper because it has a tendency to really push down when it goes through the machine. And I really love how the tree trunks came out and the base part of that. Now I'm going to choose the colors for the tree tops. I think I'm going to use three different tree trunks so I want the colors to correspond correspond back to that plaid color. I think that would look really pretty. Now ultimately there are not mint trees in the wild but I thought it just looked really cute so I went with the mint color. And I'm going to take my two tree tops. The set only comes with two so if you have more than uh, two trees that you're doing you will have to run it through your machine more than once. And I really love the way the stitching came around the tops of those trees. They're really super cute and I like that they're really obscure in shape so this way as you rotate them they take on different shapes and I really like that. So I'm going to set those two aside and I'm going to do my third tree top. I decided on this orange-ish kind of yellow color. It's kind of bright on the video. It's not as bright in person. <laughs> so 
I think that came out cute as well, so I'm going to set that aside. Now, I want to uh, use the thanks die as well. I want that to lay at the bottom of the card, and I'm just deciding on what color I want to use. At first, I thought I wanted to use the mint color, but then as I go through this, um, I changed my mind last second, and I changed to that yellow color because I think it's really, really bright, and it'll look pretty against the brown plaid. So I'm going to run this through my machine. This is the last item I have to die cut. And I'm just going to take it off my die cutting board and I'm going to set that aside as well. And now all the die cutting is complete and I'm going to take my die cutting machine and put that away. We don't need it anymore. And here is the plaid piece that I chose for the background and I'm just kind of situating it to see how the trees are going to sit. Now that was a little too high because the treetops wouldn't have space. So I'm just going to take my paper trimmer and I'm going to trim the bottom real quickly. And that size is much better. It gives me more space along the top for the treetops. And then I'm going to take the treetops and just kind of roughly lay them in there to see how I want them to look, what color combination of which ones I want where. I like the mint color in the center. I think it looks best there. And the thanks is going to go at the bottom. Now the card is ultimately going to say give thanks and I'll show you how I get to that point. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to lay down some tape runner. And I use the plus tape runner. I love this one. It's the best and I get it from Simon Says Stamps. And I'm going to line this up. Now the only thing I'm going to be aware of when I do this is I'm not going to press the trees down. I still have to put the treetops in there so I want to make sure that I don't press down on the trunks of the trees because then they'll, I won't be able to put the tops in. So I'm just going to trim the edge there real quickly because it didn't come out a clean cut at the bottom and I'm going to take my tape runner again and I'm just going to put in the treetops and I think that looks really super cute. I think these are adorable and I really love the tree stitch dies from Lawn Fawn. I think this was an awesome um, die set and it's part of their brand new release so it was just recently put out. And here I'm just going to rotate the top of that tree until it takes the shape that I want. And that's what I like about them. They have like really odd shapes and I think it's really cute. So the next thing I want to do is kind of make sure that everything is working and it does. I think it looks really nice so far. And I have to decide on a focal point. And the focal point that I decided on was the stacked leaves. I thought that looked the cutest. So I'm going to take out my uh, Memento Tuxedo Black ink. That's Copic uh, friendly ink and I will be coloring with my Copics and I'm going to be taking out the leaf stamp that I showed you guys earlier. I think that'll look really cute. I want to put it under the trees so it looks like the leaves fell from the trees in the background. So I'm going to take my Fisker stamp press and I'm going to ink up my stamp. Now the first image that I do here doesn't come out really good because I didn't press very well in the center of the stamp and it was the first time I stamped it so it kind of had a waxy coating on it. So I'm going to re-stamp it here and the second image comes out a lot better than the first one did so I'm happy with that. And I love my Fisker stamp press. It's the easiest thing I've found to make an even impression. And I'm going to take out Copic coloring markers now and I'm going to start trying to match the colors that I chose for the treetops and for the background. Now I am no expert at Copic coloring and basically all I do is I go from light to medium to dark back to medium and to light. There are a lot of tutorials on YouTube of how to do Copic coloring. I might in no means I am an expert, but I do like the way it ultimately comes out. It suffices for me for the small items that I Copic color. And again, there are not teal leaves in the wild, but I thought the two leaves looked really cute once I matched it to the treetop in the background. And I'm going to add this uh, really cute uh, pinkish red into the leaves as well. That's in the background plaid piece as well. And then I'm going to add some orange in and the the mustard yellow and the teal and I think all the colors look really really cute together and I'm really happy with the way it came out. Sometimes it's difficult to match your Copic coloring with background papers that you choose. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fussy cut this which is cut along all the edges and then I'm going to take my black marker 
and I'm just going to clean up the edges so that it doesn't look like there's any white showing. Originally I wanted to use the die to frame it, but there's no white on the card so I didn't like the way that looked and I like the way it looks cut out this way instead. Now I'm going to take my Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Vintage Photo. This is my favorite Distress Ink. If you were only to buy one, this is the one that I suggest. So I'm going to take that one and I'm going to do some distressing to the word thanks. I don't want it uh, to look so flat against the paper. I want it to have some dimension. So it doesn't seem like I did much, but once I put it on the brown background, I think it pops a lot more. And I'm just going to adhere that down as well as the leaves. And I'm really happy with how that came out. It's super cute totally exactly the way I wanted it to come out. Now I want need to add in the word give. I don't want it to just say thanks because then it kind of seems like a thank you card versus giving thanks. So I'm going to take out my mini market letters and I'm going to spell the word give. Now these letters are a little too big so all I'm doing is I'm taking my scissors and I'm cutting them down. Um, I'm trying to get them to fit so I can run them um, vertical down the side of the dashboard and I was able to make them fit and I'm just fussing around with them to straighten them out and then I want to add something to this top right hand corner of the ground and I'm just going to put an enamel dot that matches and a teal rhinestone. I think that kind of fills in that gap on the right side of the card since I have the give that goes vertical down the left. And that's it guys. The dashboard is complete. I totally love it. I love the way it came out. I was a little concerned about the teal leaves and the teal tree, but it ended up working out perfectly in the end. So I'm going to slip this into my Foxy Fix dashboard holder. And as you can see, I have that tealish blue color in the papers that I use to cover my inserts as well. So I was trying to match back to that. So I'm going to put in this dashboard first, and then I'm going to slide the new dashboard behind it and just get it to go into that pocket. And that's it guys, that is the completed dashboard. I hope you guys like this. If you have any questions, leave them below. Thanks for watching.